Hello, good evening and welcome to yet another edition of Caged Full Throttle, the only banger podcast that brings you the latest meeting reports, news, fixtures and more. With myself, Matt Joseph tonight, as always, I've got my three panellists, sadly no Andy Watts tonight, but um, first of all, we say good evening to Jordan Holland, good, good evening Jordan. Good evening Matt, good evening everyone else. And we say good evening to James Keane. Hi Matt, hi Jordan, hi Ed, hi everyone listening. And finally, hopefully if he's there, good evening to Ed for he. I think he's good there. Evening. No, he's there. He's there. We got him. We've got him. <laughs> Found him. <laughs> um, so on tonight's podcast, we'll be, we will be discussing in a moment the meeting report from the order shop back to basic gala event last Sunday. Plus, we've got, of course, the news, fixtures and whatever else. Um, we've also got the Modo quiz. And tonight, I guess, will be none, none other than Adam Seek Brown of Arena Essex fame. And we've also got the message board if the hashtag Cage Nation gets involved tonight. So as I say, we're going to kick things off with the meeting reports. Just the one report now, as always. Um, and that is from the Back to Basic Gala meeting at Aldershot Raceway on Sunday, the 20th October, where we had over at least 85 Back to Basic bangers turn up on the day with some uh, a little variety of cars on the day. It has to be said, 174 Lee Young with a Mark One Honda Prelude. Um, a pair of Beatles for 490 Matt Soul and the Zero Free car. 260 Keefe dead to be different with a smart car. Um, 184 Nutley had a Renault disability carrier van type thing, which is pretty cool to see. That's proper bilge. Um, quick report on some of the action, some little notes here. Um, heat number one saw uh, Taux 665 put in the post by number seven Christian West. Um, in the same heat, 760 Joe Reynolds. Went for the Beatles doing that race quite a few times. And then moving on to heat number two, which had a, a very destructive start, it has to be said, including when it for Nutley's uh, disability Renault Carrier, um, get, taking a big hit from 3 to 8 Mike Parry and taking a few other nasty hits that, here and there as well. Uh, the same race also saw a big barrel roll on turn number four from 215 after hitting one of the tyres leading into turn number four. Heat number three saw number 12 receive a big T-bone on the home straight within the first lap. Quite a nasty T-bone, but it was all fine and uh, soon drove off, carrying on the rest of the race. Um, heat number four saw 713 Lauren Nets um, ruin one of her front wheels after an accidental jack-up. And in the final, which included some fun, uh, 589 Ian Pullen in the uh, is Safira was reversing into the busy traffic of that race, um, including... Uh, 92 Jake White getting uh, getting stuck in with him quite a few times in uh, what was a very destructive grand final with a big grid of cars, definitely. And uh, I've got no notes from the Destruction Derby because sadly, um, I thought the Destruction Derby was cancelled um, before the fireworks took place. Now, James, how was the Destruction Derby? It was uh, very dark, very cold, but the Destruction Derby, about 25 to 30 cars came out for the DD. Um, and made it an absolutely uh, epic DD. Because the, the light was fading, um, the drivers were t- uh, we asked the drivers, "Do you still want the DD?" Um, they did, and we said, "Look, don't be no one, no one be too silly." Uh, but the DD was one, one of the best, one of the best DDs of the year. There, there actually wasn't a winner for the DD. Um, two fires broke out during the DD that caused red flags. Uh, when the second fire happened, only two cars were struggling to move, so it was declared no result. Um, but, uh, but. There was still, considering considering it was quite a cold day um, and people had been there a while, um, big crowd appreciated a big turnout of drivers coming out for the DD and I don't think anyone could have gone away from that meeting unhappy. Um, I've also got a couple of quotes from a couple of drivers out there. Um, so I spoke to Joey afterwards. Uh, he said, you know, it was an absolutely blinding meeting. Everyone out there had the right attitude. It was proper banger racing. It was an absolute compliment that none of the cars stood out. And... Um, and like, there's a huge mix of people from uh, first-time drivers out there to drivers more known for their national banger exploits, like uh, Noddy was out there, Runa, Boogie. Um, and I uh, spent a lot of time looking around with him because there's so much stuff going on. Uh, he didn't have as much time to keep looking in front of him. He enjoyed it, and he hopes that next Scarlet Night will be like that as well. Also spoke to Lauren. She says it was a massive surprise that she got to race on both days. Uh, on Saturday, someone wasn't able to make it, so she got to use a car and had a, had a very destructive day at Arlington to then come down to Aldershot. And then she said it was just absolute carnage all day, but it was very cool. Bring on next year. So I think the overall feeling is that if, uh, if that's what B2B can do a, a, a gala night down at Aldershot, then I don't think anyone could ever walk away disappointed. 
yeah, definitely a brilliant meeting to um, conclude the 2018 season at Aldershot. And would you believe we've got to wait, wait another four or five months now? And hopefully, uh, just like the start of this year, I'm hoping to be back in time for the end of February. So uh, obviously the fixtures will not um, won't be long until we hear more about the futures for 2019. So we've got to stay tuned for that. Um, moving on to some results from the day for the bangers. Heat number one was won by uh, number 20, Roger Wilkinson. Heat number two went to uh, back to basic first time at number 100, Cole Tall. Heat number three went the way of 92, Jake White. Heat number four, 81, Rick Bugler. Heat number five, 128, Daniel Allen. And the grand final was won by number four, David Wilde. That is Wildy. Um, so that concludes the meeting report from the Aldershot back to basic gala meeting for this year. And uh, we'll move over now. We would move over to the news now, but quickly, we're going to move to Jordan Holland, who's got a preview of the last ever, sadly, um, firecracker at Arena Essex this coming Sunday. Thank you, Matt. And as you're all aware by now, 40 years of racing at Arena Essex Raceway comes to an end over the course of this Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon. With a great booking list on both days, it must be said. At the moment, there are just under 70 PRI bangers booked in for the Saturday afternoon meeting, which must be said have provided some very good racing and crashing over the last few seasons with a relatively healthy domestic scene. Um, there were also around 30 Reliant Robins booked in, including two very big national banger names, including 2005 and 2011 Speed World, World Champion, 158 Shane Davis and the three-time Speedworth National Banger World Champion and two-time PRI World Champion 331 Boxer Jack Jason Jackson along with his um, Midnight Runner teammate 196 Joey Palmer. So they'll be having one last go in the Reliant Robins around Arena Essex on Saturday. Now last time Shane Davis raced at Arena it was in the PRI World Final where he didn't have the best of days. He got followed in on turns one and two in the LCQ by a 688 Steve Collins before repairing his Ford Mondeo estate to bring it out in the all-comers race only for the engine to blow up. So I'm sure Shane will be hoping for some better luck this Saturday. And he has raced in the Reliance at um, Firecrag before and he's been one to watch, always putting in a crash and not afraid to roll his reliant over so it should be a good day of course it's not just about the PRI bangers and reliant robins there's also racing coming from the mini stocks two litre stock cars stock rods and lightning rods as lem formulas also say goodbye to the raceway and sunday is the final farewell with an all unlimited banger extravaganza with over 230 cars booked in for the 28th annual Firecracker and the last ever one. Some of the sport's biggest names are booked in from all over the United Kingdom and mainland Europe, with some drivers even returning for one last crash around the Arena Essex Oval. There are some nice cars going as well, which will more than likely get involved in the action. I'm not going to say what the cars are or who's going, because if no one wants to see any pictures or know what's going there, want it to be a surprise on the day, that's fair enough. But one thing's for certain, it will be a very emotional weekend. A lot of people feel an attachment to Marina. So it'll, there'll be a few tears in the um, at the track on Sunday night. And can I just remind everyone that the Sunday event is sold out and no tickets will be available on the day. Racing will start at 1pm on both days with a fireworks display after the meeting on the Sunday brought to you by Shellshock. And just one last quick reminder from me that the other day I posted on Facebook about any drivers willing to, or fans willing to um, help me out with some uni work by just giving a quick interview or providing me with a Vox Pop. It would be greatly appreciated. I've already had a few responses from drivers and officials alike. So a massive thank you to them already. But if there's anyone else out there who knows of someone or want to do it themselves, just drop me a message either on the caged Facebook page or 
PM me directly on Facebook. And yeah, we can sort something out. But other than that, loads of going. Have a safe trip down and hopefully I'll see you all this weekend. Yeah, yes, thank you for that, uh, Jordan. Uh, of course, the last hour firecracker this coming Sunday. It's going to be emotional, but hopefully it gets the send-off it deserves uh, with a big turnout of cars, some old cars and some top crashing as well. And uh, we're going to quickly move on now to the news. There's not a lot of news now. We're getting to that time of year where um, there's not too much to talk about. So a few news items I've got. Um, kicking things off, um, a lot of people know by now that the Taunton Unlimited World Final was cancelled a while back. And has now been rescheduled for Sunday, or no, Saturday, the 10th of November, where around 45 cars are already booked in for that one. That is the Unlimited Alternative World Final at Taunton. Um, moving on to the Unlimited UK Open, UK Open Championship at Ringwood Raceway on Saturday, the 1st of December. Um, there's now around 92 Unlimited bangers booked in for that one. So once again, hopefully going to smash the 100-car barrier on the night at Ringwood Raceway. And finally, the cage meeting. We've got a quick update for you um, as of tonight. We've got 37 under 800cc non-Mondero national bangers and 19 unlimited national bangers. Um, the, the booking list will be revealed tomorrow night. That's Friday from around 8 o'clock, I will guess. There's, there's no specific time, really. Um, and that is the cage meeting. That's at Stanley Arena Sunday, the 2nd of December from 11.30am. Gonna be a brilliant weekend, of course. Ringwood the, is the night before the UK Open, so it should be a good weekend. Um, you don't need to book in, but feel free to do so. It help uh, raise the bar a little bit in terms of um, hyping the meeting up. So feel free to do so. And of course, um, I'm hoping for it to be a crashing days of racing. Nothing, you know, nothing too serious. Um, bring some used cars, some street bangers you want to kill off, whatever you want. But it'd be great to um, have you there. So feel free to join in on that one. And uh, have we got any other news that's worth mentioning before I move on? Nope. Nope. Nope, no other news. It's getting quiet now, isn't it, this time of year? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we're going to quickly move on now to the discussion part of the podcast. And uh, we've got, yeah, so we've got a bit of a discussion this week. Um, are there too few two litre national banging meetings around the country? Um, maybe I'm aiming this at speed off myself personally, but I don't know. Um, Jordan, to we come to you first? What do you think? Are there too few two litre national banging meetings around these days? Uh, well, there has been a decline, I think, from um, if you compare the amount of two litre national banger fixtures from, say, 10 years ago when Mondeo's first really started coming on the scene and uh, drivers were choosing to race instead of the Cavaliers and the Vauxhall Vectors and the like. Um, but to be fair, I think it's a bit like everything you know. I'm sure you'll read out the Facebook comments in a minute, but. You know, the Mondeos are getting quite hard to find already. You know, we've had, I'd say, 10 really good years of them. So maybe now it's um, time for another car to take over the 2-litre banner. I know some people did try out the um, X-Type Jaguars in the um, 2-litre category. But, yeah, those were banned um, for whatever reason. So, yeah, I, I don't know, to be honest. Really, I don't know if anyone else has any ideas. <laughs> well, we had a great time. We had a great time at the two-litre world final, though, didn't we? It was a fantastic day, as racing. Yeah, the Birmingham world final was very good. It had a good array of cars. Um, well, not a good array of cars, but Stacey Holsworth, I think, she raced, uh, what was it? It was a Toyota of some sort, I think. And she was actually doing really well in the main race before she got taken out by um, 2 by one Phil Milner, wasn't she? Oh yeah, dude, she's doing fantastic though. It's quite a few drivers. Yeah, no, I think that they had a great amazing. I think what's happened is that just general in car production, the two litre class is basically now where you get the almost slightly cheaper luxury cars that are incredibly well built and quite fast. So we've got to sort of a stage where the two litre cars are, are fast and well built and in absolute abundance. And it just ends up being, well, I think, I'm, I'm sure the comments are going to go on to how it got dominated by Mondeos for that reason. So yeah. it's just, uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's weird. Like, maybe there are too few because the cars are in abundance, but then maybe maybe that's where just, I think the thing is when they're nationals, the build rules means, the, the build rules mean that they can be strengthened or not strengthened, but they're stronger than they were when they're taken out of the scrapyard. See, yeah, I... I mean, 
Go on, Matt. Matt, go, go on Jordan, you go. No, all I was going to say was that, to be fair, the numbers across the board for 2D international banger meetings this year haven't really been that amazing. Um, the 2D international banger world final at Birmingham got just under 50. Uh, yeah, if that, you is, wanna... that, that is like a B level. It's like a B level world final, though, isn't it? It's not. It's, yeah, it's not... it is. But if even if you look at the um, 2D world of Shaw at Kings Den, I think that got about 60. Maybe about seventy, um, and if you compared that to a few years ago, it was getting a a hundred nearly. So I know um, drivers like to pick and choose their meetings, but I think even if Kings Lynn are struggling, then I think questions do need to be answered. But isn't but the the infantry class at Civil War is too late, isn't it? Yeah, the middle class, and that always has, and that's all. That always tends to be one. That always tends to be like the uh, has a their reputation being like the most action packed class of the three classes of the day. And but so that always seems to be quite right. So what's going right there that's not going right elsewhere? I just think maybe it's the meeting. Um Civil War is a meeting that drivers know they will be crashing out and they won't really get away with the rodding. Whereas if they went to um Kingsland two litre world of shower or to a two litre world qualifier at um Northampton or whatever, that they could Take a use Mondeo, take it, have three races and come home with very little damage, if any. Um, so, uh, like I said, I don't know. It's well, maybe as well that civil civil war people aren't racing for themselves, are they? Really? So maybe maybe, maybe yeah. you could get quite, maybe you could, maybe you could do quite well with a few uh, with a few two league meetings that are team meetings, and then maybe that maybe that would help. Yeah, definitely. I mean. I think Arena did try and do a few two litre team meetings. Um when they were in the stage of Arena sort of coming back and they were getting their domestic scene in National Bangers back a little bit. Um and those used to be really good lively meetings, but um you know, even at Speed Weekend at Ipswich they used to do um two litre national banger teams and now this year we had back to basic bangers and stuff like I just even the um team meetings I think Yeah I don't think they're as popular to be honest. I'll tell, tell you what I think, in my opinion. Um within speed I think I think yeah there are too few uh two league national banger meetings. Um I think all this all I didn't have any this year. I remember there was a, a two litre or eight or eighteen hundred domestic um two years ago now that raised about fifty cars all together and that was a pretty solid session with plenty of crashing going on. But certainly within speed off, it seems when you have two litre meetings, um, domestics, they don't really hit more than 20, 25 cars. They struggle big time. Then you look at other tracks, um, like my other local, Stan Lake, which isn't two litres, it's 1800s, I know. But even then, they went on a high for a few years. Then the micro bangers came into play, and then the micro bangers took over. But now it seems to, it might reverse back on itself again. I think the micro bangers are dying out big time again at Stan Lake, but then the the 1800s might make a big return with a bigger grid of cars, hence the, the cage meeting um, in December. Um, if it was my choice, I mean, uh, this is the problem with two litres. There's a lot of people that are against Mondeos and some that are for Mondeos. Um, personally, I think Mondeo looks like a good, a, makes a good looking banger. Um, I might get hurt for saying that, but um, whereas to me, I think a Focus is an ugly looking banger. Um, and this is the thing, in terms of the cage meeting, I would have had I'd have preferred Mondeos, but the drivers don't want Mondeos. They want the focuses and for it to be non-Mondeos. Um, so we're picking the the uh, the non-Mondeo class on the basis that um, it will be heavy hitting, just like the support class that the um, old boys is that, is that coming down to what's available, though? No one, like, what's quite easily available is a focus, but no one wants to be out in a focus against Mondeos. I think so, potentially, yeah. Um, and again, obviously... Be- Sorry, gone can. No, I was about to say, yeah, I think that's a fair point you make there, James. I think definitely because they're probably the the better cars to get. And they're quite, they're quite good. I mean, they are good bangers to race, I believe, as well. Hence why they're so popular as well in street bangers at Stan Lake. So that could be the answer. I think as a car in general, they sort of don't get, like in, like in most motoring press and stuff, I think basically all motoring press praises Mondeo just for the fact that for the money, it's fast, reliable and a strong car to be having. And I think... 
given how many Mondeos have been built over time, that means that now in that class, that car is fast enough and reliable enough that it could it would dominate quite a lot of other stuff in that class. And maybe that's what that, that's part of the reason as well. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt in that the Ford Mondeo is a great car. It's um it's in banger terms, it's fast, it's strong, reliable, uh easy to build, um lots of spare parts. And yeah, drivers do want that nowadays. They want a car that's easy to build and they can guarantee will um, keep them on the pace and make them last all day and stuff yeah. like that. So it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. Sorry, go on. Sorry, yeah. I was going to say it's it's the sorry guys I'm back. It's technical difficulties there. <laughs> He's not it's dead. The, um, <laughs> it's the it's really the evolution of the car in general because I mean you know you know the Mondeo was say the mid size family saloon before this it was the Sierra which weren't which weren't great bangers to be fair and then you had the Cortina before that but um, I think it's just um, the fact that the front wheel drive which is, which doesn't help a lot of people don't really like front wheel drive bangers because they keep popping out drive shafts and all that but um, just looking at the Facebook comments um, people saying you know some people are saying Mondeo Fest is great some people are saying they aren't um, some people are saying uh, Wayne Davies says uh, he says RCI rules say no Jaguar X types of Mondeo sub frames Mondeos are getting harder to find now particularly the Mark 1 and the Mark 2 full enough the Mark 1s can be considered a classic now not quite Mark 1 Granada classic but it's a bit of a classic he said um, RCI called the shots as usual so now it's 1.8 domestics taking over um, from speaking to the banger drivers I know so, like some of them love Mondeos and some of them hate them and because they would have been coming from racing the smaller cars to race in Mondeos. And the problem with Mondeos is they're too strong. They actually, some drivers, they don't like racing Mondeos because they hurt. You know, they get the car is just too strong. It doesn't fold up. So you yeah. end up getting hurt rather than the, the car bending. But, I mean, it's just the evolution of the car. Because, say, if you look at how a, a Mark II Granada folds up compared to a Mondeo, the Granada, all the doors will bend on it because there's no side impact bars on it. Whereas the Mondeo, basically, the, the cabin, in other words, the four doors will stay; they won't bend at all. I'm saying, even on some, say, even on occasion, one day, if you took the side plates off or took the door plate off, the driver's door or the passenger door would still open. So mm. it's just the, the evolution of the car is what's hurting the sport now. And um, we've had this conversation before a few times, but it's just something that, we, that we're going to have to live with. But I think now as well that the <clears throat> some drivers just prefer, obviously. Unlimited. Some drivers prefer Mondeos, so it's up to the drivers really. But the drivers need to have their say a bit louder, and both the promotions and the people who make the rules need to listen to them. Hmm. But it isn't. I think then we get to that point. We're talking about the whole mixed grid thing again, isn't it? It's like if if you know drivers are turning with Mondeos, would you want to turn up in anything else? But yeah, do that's you true. say that? So Ed. You no, good. Say... Oh, go on, Jordan. You were saying you were saying. Sorry. No, I was going to say um. A few years ago, you used to get quite a lot of Ford Cougars into the International Bangers, and they were they weren't as quick as a Mondeo because they were a little bit heavier, but they were hard cars as well, weren't they? And you don't really see many of them now, do you? It's the supply chain with them because I think cer- certain Marco Mondeos, particularly say the four-wheel driving or the V6 one, all of a sudden they're collectible, whereas five or six years ago they were just scrap. Like you don't know, forget the uh, Marco Mondeo was what twenty five years old now. Nineteen ninety three was the first one. I mean, yeah. back then we were all you know. Back then it was wall to wall Cortinas, Capris, anything else. You know, Mark one and Mark two grannies were easily found, whereas all of a sudden they weren't. So I think the problem with the Cougar is as well. Some people, I don't know who they are, probably midlife crisis people. All of a sudden think they're a classic car. They're not really. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough they were built in America and branded Mercury Cougar, and they at the time they to Jordan any. To Jordan, anything of that age is a classic car. I remember. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I was <laughs> still a baby. Yeah, well, I think, it's just the, a baby I think the problem with the Cougars is just the supply chain. There was less of them sold. So there is going to be less of them. Consider yeah. them the the Mark yeah. Granada Coupe. There was less of them sold. So there is going to be less of them, but they still keep coming. That's the funny thing. I do sort of wonder as well. I've got I've got absolutely new evidence about this up, but also when we're talking about the different classes of National Banger. Whereas Unlimited has a lot of the prestige, which is shown by the World Final compared to other World Finals. And Micro Madness is basically a a, a fun, entertaining thing that people going into know that uh, it doesn't have the prestige, but you know it's going to be fun, they're easy to build. Is there not, have they not just sort of maybe got lost in the middle ground? Is there maybe an argument for that? 
that's me that's me playing sort of slightly devil's advocate. Do I think it was anything more to this? But mm. it would be because um, it might it would be because be, yeah. because the limited national bangers is is the prestige one, right? If 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 you're the top and limited banger driver, you're talked as one of the top drivers. In in micro madness as as a, a or in micro bangers as a national formula, it's it's less about that. It's more about the action and the fun. But then there is that sort of middle ground of. Uh, and again, uh, I can I can counteract that argument of micro bangers. I mean, Stan Lake has as an as had an awful year for micro bangers. Um, with they've had quite a few fixtures for micros this year, but. The turnouts have struggled to hit more than 30 on a few occasions, and the action has been pretty meh, pretty average, I think, because a lot of the drivers are saving their cars now. So I, I worry well, that well, micro are... But Speedworth have a good turnout of micros all the time, and like Civil War uh, micros are great as well. So like the, other promotions tend to have a decent turnout of micros. Didn't Aldershot only get 30 cars? The no, I was about to say, yeah. Micros. Aldershot used to hit 60. I mean, I'm... Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I'm not going to... That was the week, that was the week I was on holiday, so I'm, I did actually miss that meeting. <laughs> so, yeah. no, but I'm, I'm, no, I'm, just thinking about, I'm just thinking about the ones that used to be at Wimbledon. The um, the old Wimbledon micro badness, which has now moved to Eastport. That, that, that always had huge turnouts. Yeah, and before that, yeah. the, mini, the mini and Metro meeting, who can forget them? Yeah. They we'll, try and have a mini, we'll try and have a mini and Metro meeting now. You know, you, you won't get... You, you probably would, you'd struggle to get into double figures at Metro because <laughs> right, all of a sudden yeah. minis have become like minis have become extremely collectible. Like obviously, you know, my family being reared on minis, now they've been collectible since I was a kid. But I mean, scrap minis are gone. The days of a fifty quid mini are gone. I mean, basically, if you're looking at even a rough mini, it's a, it's a thousand thousand quid. You know, it's not taken away for free. Okay, so, so... it's just I think it's just the evolution of the car, and that affects <laughs> supply chain as well. So if one of us if one of us were a promoter, imagine we're a promoter. How would how, how would you try to how would you try to save it? Has anyone got any thoughts? That I think maybe team meetings might do a bit more with them. I think if it was a shell track, I'd definitely include the Mondeos. That's all I'm going to say because I think on shale Mondeos are pretty epic. Think of Mildenhall in years gone by, and obviously Kings Lynn. Um, if it was tarmac, then I'd say I don't know really if it was tarmac, but if it was shale, then definitely I'd keep the Mondeos. And keep um, just help promote them really, and get a decent grid of cars. Mm. Well, speaking of the old Mundanos, um, I'm not sure how how accurate of a source this would be. I'm looking on Wikipedia at the moment. It gives the assembly figures for the Formula and Dale Mark One as one million three hundred sixty-two thousand, whereas the Mark Two was one million two hundred thousand. Now I don't know how far away they've been dispersed, and the Mark Three is one million four hundred thousand. So there obviously still is plenty of them out there. But don't forget as well, years ago when we were all racing Cortinas, Capris and Granados, there was no um, scrap collection on every single corner of the street. There was no people sticking up uh, posters for, you know, call us to collect your scrap car. There was none of that. So car, the cars used to hang around for longer. So it's a lot of still the supply chain as well. They're just being squ- squashed quicker now because of the value of scrap metal. That could be at too. So, so, are we all, so do we all agree then that there's too few two-litre banger meetings? I'd like to see more, but I just yeah, I would, I would, I would love to see more because I think the more variety in the sport, the better. But it's just in terms of how you that. I was going to say, so, um, some drivers might want variety because, I mean, you know, say the cost of a gear to build, I don't know, a Scorpio or an E-Class Merc, that's one load of money, probably close to a thousand. And the same again for Mondeo. So it's it's getting too expensive for the drivers and they need to go out and buy the cars as well. Do you stop so I, so I get you. So I get you to, you'd have to have an entirely different set of four plates, door plates ready for that and a different category, which means if you're going to focus, you're not going to focus on that category. Yeah, and it's looking like it. So. Yeah, it's looking like it. So I think that's why back to base is getting better because it's cheap and cheerful. Yeah, you, you, don't need, you, don't, yeah, you don't need as much specialist equipment. No, and I'd say the, the racing isn't as hard either. So you don't need to put a floor plate in or a roof plate to protect yourself, never mind to strengthen up the car. And we all love back to basics. And I, I think, is that the end of the debate before we move on to the big quiz and the uh, chat? I think so. I think so, so. yeah. And I believe it's now time to uh, welcome on our guest, um, Adam Seat Brown. So I'm going to pass you over to James Keane. So, Adam, hopefully you've managed to to dial in and join us. Uh, Are you there, Adam? Yes, I am. Thank you very much. Uh, It's great to have you on. 
basically, as we're about to go into the final weekend at PRA, it's a very exciting and sad occasion at the same time. Um, but when you're thinking about banger racing, isn't just about people working in it or um, racing in it. It's also about the fans. And I don't think if you ask anyone who was the uh, who, <laughs> sorry, I just made me laugh with a uh, with a little gif. So basically confirming what I'm about to say. If you're going to think of a super fan, um, Adam, I think most people would say that you are absolutely dedicated to the sport and the track. Um, so just briefly, how did you get involved with going down to Arena Essex? Well, it started a very long time ago when uh, my dad uh, first saw uh, Arena Essex on, on an advert. And apparently he went down there and uh, he bring my brother when I was too young. Then a few years later, I came along and uh, oh, got me hooked with it. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> well, I think we can all agree with that. But anyway, so to the people listening at home, we've asked Adam to come up with his uh, top three moments. It soon appeared that picking the top three moments was going to be difficult when there have been so many great moments. So what we're going to do is, uh, so he's actually picked the top ten moments, numbers four to ten. We're going to go through really quickly, and then we'll talk a bit more about the top three. Um, so, so I'm going to, so for these, uh, for these next few, Adam, if you, I'm just going to mention what you've mentioned as one of the big things you'll remember about Arena. If you can just say something really quickly about it. I'm going to start off with the two-litre stop cars at Arena. Yes. Um, when uh, Speedworth uh, dropped them, um, Arena and uh, Ringwood um, came to, to join together. And uh, it was pretty good. It was like, even though they're like smaller class than the national saloons, but it's like nudge and spin, they're pretty good. And it's three times cheaper than the um, national saloon stock cars. Absolutely. And of course, PRI have had a very dedicated driver base ever since, including quite a lot of crossover between their banger drivers and their two-litre stock car drivers. Uh, your number nine, then, was uh, Reliant Robbins down at Arena. Yeah, you can't help with Reliant Robbins because they're great fun. They can roll around and get crashing them. And uh, during one of the firecrackers, um, I went into the, um, in the Robin to have a sit down anyway. And Funny enough, some people have a little tried trick. Try to tip me up to one side, and they got me freaked out a bit as well. <laughs> I think the Reliant Robins are one absolute certain way to make sure that the families and people, maybe slightly more casually involved with the sport, will turn up and think, "Wow, that was that was pretty epic." I think I think it's very hard to go away from a Robin race without without being entertained. Going on to number eight, Micro Bangers at Arena. Yeah, micro bangers. Uh, they're pretty good though. Very small and uh, rather than the, oh, no, not one of micro bangers. Um, it's pretty good as well. We had like a good turnout back at uh, 2014, where nearly a hundred of them turned up for the uh, four-man rookie banger team for the Chick Rock Memorial meeting. Yeah, there's been there's been quite a few good micro banger meetings as well. The uh... Also, the Micro Bangers World Series at Arena this year as well was uh, ended pretty well as well. I was there for I was there for the final meeting, and that was a that, that was that was a really good day's action all around. Moving on to number seven, something I remember seeing on TV was the A League of Their Own Banger Challenge, and I remember seeing Freddie Flintoff, Jamie Redknapp, and uh, who else was the other one? So it was uh, Jack Whitehall. Jack Whitehall, of course, because I remember him screaming for most of the time in his car. So you you, you were there, that day, weren't you? You were there that day. Yeah. I was there though, and uh, apparently we're allowed to take photos and film, but not allowed to upload them to its aired. And I aired upload about four weeks um, after it's aired, because I was supposed to like upload them after the season. But since yeah. they were was on the newspaper, though, you may remember it. And I thought, why not just upload them? See how it goes. Yeah, of course. There's also Arena's been uh, quite a favourite spot for a lot of filming. Um, there's even there's been like Top Gear being filmed down there. I remember uh, Richard Hammond took a load of touring car drivers down there. Um, it's it's sort of location near London has always been a favourite spot for TV yeah. people. It was just it was yeah. just quite funny seeing the reaction of the reaction of those people in a race that <laughs> now it's hard to tell what it was like from the editing, um, but it looked like no one was being a bit afraid about giving them a little nudge. So, <laughs> yeah, so, so it was pretty good anyway. It was brilliant and. Uh... Also, it was not the only time I've seen um, a Rene- when I went to Renetic doing recording. The other one was um, there was a show called The Magicians on BBC where they were doing a magic trick with um, two crates and a 
single decker bus. Oh, I didn't see that. I'll have to try and see if I can dig that on YouTube. Uh, it's Maybe. very hard to find them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on to number six, um, just generally talking about impact videos. So I know you have a uh, quite a good relationship with. Yeah, because uh, cause back in uh, 2016 in May, because uh, they've mostly been filming one camera because the other one has to film on either is that Kings Lynn or Mirren Hall. And they asked me and to help out. I just got, I feel happy to help out. And it was a uh, fantastic, you know, I helped them a lot, send them over as well. And also I send them my in-car footage as well for them as well. Yeah, no, it's obviously something you're really passionate about is, uh, is about recording and uh, making sure people are entertained by banger videos. So, and I've, I've seen you many times hang, um, like sitting there with the guys in the video, in the video store having a chat. And obviously it's, it's nice to see you have that relationship with them. Going on to number five, P the PRI Legends meetings. And we've just come off one of those. So if you just want to, uh, very quickly also, you can, uh, if you want a few seconds to talk about the last one as well. Yeah, because the, uh, because from that, it was a fantastic meeting. The biggest turnout they ever, since they began, nearly 80 of them turned up. It was pretty good. It's great to see those legends, or my dad used to call them legends, who have come out of retirement, where it's out there, rocking chairs, into the driving seat, have a good laugh, bump them, spin around, and uh, have a good time seeing old um, legends again. There was, there, was quite, there was quite a few current drivers at last one as well, wasn't there? Yeah, it is, yeah. It was pretty good, though. We've got, like... Um, Sherwood come out. Uh, ooh, there's loads and lots of them as well, including Roy yeah, the Boy yeah, Morning yeah, as well. It's definitely I, brilliant. Did I see that Cecil won the DD as well? <laughs> yeah, there. Caught, so, yeah, there's quite a few visiting drivers, which is nice to see. Yeah, even Cecil was in that meeting as well. <laughs> yeah, so he won the DD, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, it was all pretty good as well. There was loads of stoppages, so, you know, because, uh, you know, people getting very old age and, uh, Oh, well, I've been targeted by now, anyway. <laughs> so, moving up to number four, it's an absolute, absolute legend of arena. Number 555, five, five, Roy the Boy Rawlins. Um, I, I, think, I, think, I think both you and me, I, I, I don't know about you, but um, unfortunately, I, I didn't really get to see him at his uh, absolute prime and top level, but everything I've seen and everything I've seen since, every time I've come out, it's a real special occasion when I get to see him. Um, what are your thoughts about him? Yeah, he is one of a kind, a proper gentleman, a true legend. He always has some great times, whether it's like racing on his own or racing the cream teams back in the old days. He enjoyed it, even racing in the lightning rods. He is a true legend. I've been a fan of him since I was a kid. He's a proper legend. So Jordan, you must as well be pretty thinking pretty much the same thing. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, like Adam said and like you said as well, um, when I first start, started going arena in about 2004, 2005, Roy Boy was still racing, but it was sort of coming towards the end of his stint. Um, but even then, I had some great memories of him. I think it was um, shoot at 2003 or four, the year he had the um, flower power car. That is one memory that really sticks <laughs> in my mind, him coming out on the parade. and do you, I bet you remember that one, Adam, or have seen pictures of that one. Uh I haven't seen it, but I've got the uh, DVD of it, and he dresses as a hippie, and he, he likes dressing up, though, for the past meetings. Yeah, he certainly did. As you say, great entertainer and great legend as well. Absolute legend of the sport that have just has maintained his passion throughout and inspired quite a lot of people within the sport as well. So we're going to move on to the top three now. And with the top mm -hmm. three, of the guys as well, if they've got any memory of these, uh, number three um, is caravan racing. Something myself, not a massive fan of, given that I have to clean them up quite a few times, but I can see why they bring the families in. What are your thoughts on yeah. caravan racing? Yeah. It's always a once in a lifetime opportunity to tow a cab and get smashed up to pieces. It's great fun, though. And even though uh, we bring in my, my family's old caravan and my grandparents' caravan, putting in the caravan race as well from 2014 and back at Easter, Bank Holiday Monday in 2018. So how did that come about? So what happened there? Was it a case that they were asking if anyone had any caravans and uh, you, you, you knew that your family had some old caravans available or what happened there then? Yeah, the, the caravans were getting uh, old and um, a bit like getting 
sort of mouldy, which is uh, not suitable for caravans. And because uh, no one, the breakers don't want to take them. So one way to take them is, is to, I mean, Essex. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I think I think the thing with caravan racing, like I said, with Reliant Robins earlier, is one of the surefire ways to make sure that for events such as like Easter, basically bank holiday weekend events where you know you're going to get a big family turnout, it's one way to make sure that like all the people who are sort of occasionally see a banger race, they'll know they'll see some absolute destruction. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so Jordan, how do you feel about candle uh, caravan racing on the whole? Um, one memory that sticks in my mind of um, caravan racing at Arena is um, the 2006 one, I think it was. Um, it 2007. Was 2007, yeah. I think Adam knows what what I'm going to say. Um, it was the first time that Arena had done one in a few years. Um, Paul Corpiello had this brought out this massive, great, big caravan, and I remember the reporter saying, "Liminal, uh, Paul Corpiello is moving house to, today instead of racing." And um, that's a <laughs> great line from um, a true banger content yeah. legend. Massive pile up on turn one, everyone piling and everyone getting out, shaking hands. You had a load of caravans left running, and then another pile up on the home straight. It was just a fantastic race. And I've actually got that meeting on DVD, and even though I watched the race, and it's utterly yeah. amazing. Yeah. And on that, that, that year was my first time ever seeing caravan racing. Yeah. <laughs> Picked a good one then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I remember being a kid seeing the caravan races at Hensford and like, and it's one of those things you sort of look forward to when you're like 10, 11 years old. You're just looking forward to it all race just because you know that like you're just going to see bits fly all over the place and it's fantastic. And um, so, yeah, it's one of the best, one of the best things you can see if you're taking the family down, um, family down to the track, you know you're going to uh, have everyone entertained. Uh, so moving on to number two, Something that I know one of the uh, one of the people from Cage absolutely love is Big Van Bangers. Yeah, <laughs> Big Van Bangers is one of my favourite bike clubs. I love them. They're, I like to see them roll. It's crazy. I love those. Yeah. So 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 can so what was your best Big Van Banger meeting down at the arena? Oh, well, there's lots of good ones though. But my favourite would be 2016, where three coaches involved. Really, I, I don't think I've seen a video of that. I'll have to dig that one up. Um, what is what is it about vans, especially that like really gets you excited? Well, you see, what well, you never see them like often most of the years. Obviously, like once a year or twice a year in some tracks. But with this, it get loads of them. You get smashed up with old transits, LD vans, Leyland Dab, Bedfords, or camper vans, motor homes, a lot recently. <laughs> so you're going to guess which member of the K staff I'm going to ask first about a uh, ba- big Van Banger question. Uh, Ed, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be me, obviously. Yeah. So, you, as everyone knows, you are absolutely you are a huge fan of big vans. Um, so, I mean, like, I mean, I'm sure you can relate on this. It's like there is something about big vans that is exciting when they go out there. There is. I mean, my first van meeting I remember is Ringwood in 2004. It was about 45 vans, mostly transits, LDVs, all the boring stuff. But what got me into the vans was Milden or Unlimited vans in 2005 when there was... I mean, the turnout was 58, but that doesn't, that's not the reason why. The, the reason why was because most of the field was dominated by uh, camper vans, ambulances, old Bedfords, proper van machinery. And about five to ten of them fell apart and uh raced you know just a sash uh can't use the word for it um they just fell apart throughout the whole night and um that's what van banger racing is about it's not about going round and round not hitting, not hitting anything um you get the big t-bones the big hits but the old ones that fall apart that's what makes van banger racing great so we're going to move on to uh your number one um your number one thing about arena essex raceway and that was the granada weekend in 2013. Yeah, because everybody agree, because from that weekend in 2013, one of the best banger racing meetings of all time in history. You do not expect so many Granadas packed in for two days. The ones that didn't make it into the uh, main meeting, they had to win the final and be in the main event, which is 
fantastic as well. So how many? So how many turned up in total? Say again. How, so how how many uh, Granadas were there in total over the weekend? I, I lost count. I know there was like forty odd on the Saturday. Yeah. But I think in total about. I'm going to say probably over 250. I lost count anyway. So. <laughs> so, so what is it about that one meeting that really sticks in the head as your like number one PRI moment of all time? Well, it is a bring out the retired legends like the Suicide Squad and the Condoms and other legends from all over, all over. And also Pee Wee comes up with not one, but two good others as well. The, Minister and the Winston estate, which is quite big as well, and also with fundraising for Mergeye Swiss Search, which I do some fundraising as well. Oh, well, that's, uh, well, that's definitely something um, that would be clear why it's stuck in the head so much. So, Adam, now we're going to move on to a special edition of the quiz, a PRI quiz. Given that you're here, given it's the, given we're just ahead of the uh, final weekend. So we thought the best way was to do a quiz um, that highlights uh, some of the uh, great things that have happened with PRA over the years. Um, so instead of the usual quiz wall, rules, uh, there's no time limit, um, but you mm-hmm. also don't you also don't get to pass and come back. So you get one guess at each question. Um, okay. You have to you have to wait for me to finish reading the question out before you have a guess. That's basically so everyone at home can also try and have a guess if they want to. Um, what will happen is I'll ask Matt to take us on a rolling lap. Um, the people at home will hear the rolling lap music, um, but unfortunately, due to technical limitations, we won't. Matt will mm-hmm. say green, 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 at which point I'll be asking you uh, 10 questions. So wait till I've finished asking the question and have a guess. You get one lifeline. Okay. Your one lifeline, you don't know the answer, you say thumbs down, thumbs down, at which point Matt will say red, red, red. I'll give you a clue, and then you get one guess after I give you the clue, and then we carry on with the rest of the questions. Okay. Is, that okay? Is that all okay? Yep, I'm ready to go. Okay. Mr. Matt Josie, can you take us on a rolling lap, please? Yes, I will. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's go quizzing. <laughs> And we're green, green, green. Name the last three Firecracker champions. Uh, Boxer Jack, Sonny Sherwood, and Terry Skeef. Oh, incorrect. What is the name of the first Rolling Thunder Show meeting of the year called, which also features PRI formulas? The, um, the... The overall expo? The expo, correct. Which PRI banger driver and stock car racer starred in a BBC documentary as a teenager mini stocks driver? Alfie Jones. Correct. Which three tracks have hosted the PRI banger world final? Can you repeat the question, please? Which three tracks have hosted the PRI Banger World Final? Cohen Gay, Arena and Coyford. Correct. What is Turn 1 and 2 called? Uh, that would be Liz's Ben. You'll have to argue with Jordan after that. He gave a different thing for that. <laughs> what was two, What was Paul Corpiella's car? What, what, what car was Paul Corpiella driving when he had his famous crash where he ended up about 10 feet up in the sky into the barrier. What car was he driving? Town limo. Correct. What year was Civil War hosted at Arena Essex? 2005. Correct. What was Arena Essex before it was a racetrack? Repeat that again, please. 
What was the land of Arena Essex used for before it became a racetrack? It was a quarry. Correct. What year was Arena Essex opened? 1978. Correct. Which current Speedworth starter began his training as a junior member of staff at Arena at the Rolling Thunder Show? Bumps out. Okay. It's the ginger one that's not Alex Dunmore. Oh, I haven't got a clue on that one. No, fair enough. I put that one in because I thought it might be the harder one. And it's one, two. And that's your 10. And you did incredibly well there. I think <laughs> better, than most people, most, better than most people do here. Um, the, the, one, the, the one you might be able to argue with Jordan with, um, what mm. is turn one and two called? Jordan, Jordan says it's the QE2 corner, named after the bridge in that area as well. Oh, yeah. They have, like, different names, though. They call it the QE2 corner, and sometimes they call it the Leafy's Bend. Yeah. Now, to be fair, I'll hold my hands up. Adam is absolutely spot on with that. So, yeah, that's correct yeah, as right. well. Point has been given. Point has been given. Name the last three Firecracker champions. It was Boxer. You were right. He won it last year. Chris Trickett and Dean Goodell. Oh, Firecracker champions. Unfortunately, that was incorrect. Um, yeah, and uh, the speed work, and the current speedwork starter that began his training as a junior member of staff at the Rolling Thunder Show, the ginger one that's not Alex Dunmore, it's Mark Ayres. I threw that one in as one that would be slightly harder, but still arena related. But your final score was one, two, bum, bum, bum. eight. So oh, that's not bad. I've- that's not bad. No, that's pretty good, especially especially as I threw a couple of curveballs in there as well. I think that's that's a that's a great I effort. I think Adam, yeah. that will put you joint top of our leaderboard at no, the moment. Right. Yeah. It puts him top. It puts him top head of Ed Fahey. It, it was using sticky furs and welded diff. I'm not happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Adam, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Um, going into this weekend there was only one person that really could be coming on the show um, I know you've said before about how this will probably mean that it's a lot harder for you to get to banger racing in the future but I think I can speak for all of us drivers, fans officials everywhere to say that we really hope that you um, still get to the occasional meeting still still can get to some other tracks even if it's not quite as often as you've been able to because I think, cause I think we can all agree it's great to see a fan with such passion and such knowledge and um, I really hope this isn't the end of you as a supporter in the sport even if it's not quite as often just still getting just still getting to the occasional race um, I've, I've been really glad to have you on I'm sure everyone else on the show feels the same as well yeah definitely yeah same here so so thank you very much Adam um, and we'll see you at the weekend cheers see Adam you see you at the weekend mate <laughs> take it easy bye take care bye and that's it. That's the mold old quiz. Finally, somebody has topped um, four other people who have taken on the quiz in recent months. And uh, we now move on to the, the final part of the podcast, the fixtures. Um, sadly, no message board tonight. Um, I know Ed he is very angry about this. The hashtag Cage Nation. Not um, putting any messages across at all via Facebook or Spreaker. Apart from Adam Zeke Brown, who said hello at the start of the show. So, uh, come on, Cage Nation. Where yeah. are you? And uh, so, kicking things off. I was going to say that it's most, it's most unusual to have Adam Seekburn actually on the program and not uh, just contributing from the outside. Yeah, and where's Magic 208? Where's he gone? He's not been on here for many podcasts now. Well, but anyway. Magic has disappeared. It's a magic tri- trick, isn't it? But I'll say magic trick. It's It'll magic. Love that. <laughs> and, magic, uh, yeah. So, kicking things original. off. So, we're going to take you for the next two weekends of racing. Uh, uh, so Saturday, the third of November, we've got the annual 600cc Red Slack Memorial at Ringwood Raceway. Also on the same night, Ipswich hosts the Gala Night for Speed Earth Domestic Bangers. Moving on to Sunday, the fourth of November, Stanley has the annual Bonfire Bash for 800cc bangers and unlimited bangers. It is worth noting that the unders class will be um, they will be allowing the Mondeos. Uh, Yarmouth has the Garden Night for Back to Basic Bangers. And of course, the last event on that day is 
the of course the Arena Essex last ever firecracker for unlimited national bangers. Moving on to the following weekend, Saturday the 10th of November, kicking things off at Mildenhall Stadium for the Micro Bangers, where there is currently 86 cars booked in for that one. And on the same night, down at Taunton is the Unlimited World Final. And finally, Sunday the 11th of November, we've got Unlimited Banger action up at Northampton Shellway. And uh, that concludes the... Um, the fixtures and pretty much the whole of the podcast and it is about to strike uh, nine Matt, o'clock at night just before we do matt there's a couple of other fixtures in there as well probably worth giving a quick mention to. if if we're back in three weeks time then of course the uh speedworth domestic banger championship of the world will be at ipswich on the 17th so hopefully we'll have a we'll have a report for that on the next podcast as well um also um also before that, Hempsford will also have their gala event as well with the Man of the Midlands, which is something a little bit close to my heart because that I remember um, going down to watch a lot of uh, to watch the domestic bangers at Hempsford and gala night all the time, and hopefully that'll be a good turnout for that one at Hempsford. Yep. So thank you for that, James. The additional last minute additions to the fixtures. Um, we will see you either in three or four weeks' time. We'll decide that in a moment, actually. Um, so we say good night to my panelists. Good night to James Keane. Good night, Matt. He might still be a baby, but he'd do. Uh, good night, Jordan Hollands. Good night, Mr. Matt Josie. Good night, Ed. Good night, James. Good night, everyone else. Thanks for listening. And <laughs> see you at the weekend. Good night, Jim. And, <laughs> and uh, good night. <laughs> I mean, he's Irish, but we like him, really. It's Ed for he. Good night, Ed. Good night, everyone whose names I've forgotten and couldn't care to mention. But fair play, Jordan, you did well. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so... <laughs> Thank you very much for listening and we will see you very soon. Stay safe for now.